Imagine you have a situation where you're writing a small script and you want to test it in real time. So for instance, I have frame X right here. What if I could change this to 400 and see this frame update right away? Well, actually this is quite simple to do and I'm going to show how to do that. So before I show the magic of it, I'm going to run it in my command line there. And now if I change this to a 400, you see it changes right away. And you see some stuff in the output from my script being run as well. So this is going to be a, a really simple overview of how to do this, but anyone can do this and it's really simple. So the way this is done is through something like this. So what we have right here is a simple process where we're listening for a script to change. And when it does, we are calling this update function, which is going to load the source, it's going to execute the source, and it's going to display any errors if there are any. That's it. It's that simple. I'll go into that in a little more detail in a minute, but again what's nice is that anytime I make a change in the script, it will immediately execute the script and we get to see the changes. Now this includes if there's errors, it'll just show the error. So if I add an A to the end of the 500, I'll see a message right there, line 48, malformed number. So it's really nice for prototyping things really quickly. In this instance, I'm messing with a little car model in a viewport frame, and I'm messing with some math that I'm not super familiar with. And so it's really nice to be able to see the changes in real time. Again, it's as simple as pasting this into my command line. Now, it's not as super robust as I wish it could be. Uh, you could easily create a plugin around this and use that instead. And uh, maybe I will do that too just to make it easier. Uh, but again, to kind of walk through this one more time, if uh, all we have to do is listen to a changed event on our script and uh, call this update. And so what we're doing, we're, we're calling load string on the source of the script that changed. And that is going to ideally return a function. Uh, but if there's any sort of parsing error, it's going to spit back a nil value for that and then an error string. And so if it loaded successfully, we can execute that loaded function. We're running that in pcall, uh, protected mode here. That way we don't spam our output with errors. Instead, we just capture those errors and we show them, we show them ourselves in this little error text, uh, text label here. Uh, so again, it's really straightforward to do. Now, if there's anything that is influencing your script externally from the script, I recommend listening for changes on those objects as well. So for instance, I have a viewport camera that is influencing uh, values within the script here. And so I also want to listen for changes on that and rerun the script then too. So for instance, I have the viewport camera. If I change the field of view, I have the script run again as well. Now, last but not least here, we have a little kill value. And so this is just a bool value that is placed into the workspace here. And anytime this gets checked, it will just kill this process. And again, it's really simple. We're just disconnecting any events we've connected to and destroying that kill object. So if I click that, you'll see it disappears. And now changes I make are not being listened to. Now, I don't recommend doing this for a full-fledged game that you have. You know, Don't paste this into your game and edit scripts in real time there. I recommend if there's you know a process you're trying to test or prototype, throw that code into a, a new place file like this is and uh, run it there. And again, I think this could be loaded up as a plugin pretty easily too. But for uh, the sake of simplicity, uh, you know th this is what it looks like. Again, it's really simple. I just kind of want to show how it's done, and uh, so other people could do this as well.